The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the April 30th, the terrific Tuesday, maybe turnaround Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie. Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Yeah, I know it's always comfortable to be prisoners of your past, but folks, become pioneers of your future. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. How about we have an extraordinary one? And if you want to have an extraordinary day, which I think we all do, just remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we can go check on the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers, well, what they're communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more importantly, during this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we got you covered. Just send me an email. Let those fingers do the walking. It's steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And in our Tiger's Den, well, any and every and all pings will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Less Show. Right now, the Dow off nine points. That is a flat market. I think it was down about 150 or, or more not too long ago. The S&P is off four. That's a flat market. Uh, the NDX is not flat. It's down nine-tenths percent. The Russell off a half a percent or nine points. Semis are up nine points. The New York Stock Exchange is up 24. The Wilshire is down 69. The Trannies are off three. The Composites off 65. The Spot Volatility Index is back to about flat. It's trading at 13.17. Gold's up three. Silver up two pennies. Light Sweet Crude up 37 cents. Lean the charge the upside. It is Shopify up nearly 8 percent or 17 bucks. John Bean Technology. Corp up eight nine percent. That's nearly nine bucks. Martin Marietta up eight eighty eight. That's the good luck symbol in China. If you take a look at Google, Google down one hundred and eight bucks, one hundred and seven, depending on which shares you're looking at. Zebra Technology off fifteen, and Amazon down fourteen. Now Google pulling right back to support. The interesting thing about Google uh, in this chart, in looking at this chart here, let me just do this. A couple of things. Let me. So when I began my entree into technical analysis, what does that mean, technical analysis? When I take a look at this blank chart right here, just start with a blank chart. You know, what, what this chart represents to me is the human emotion of, of the worldwide, worldwide, worldwide human emotion for Google at this point in time. And this chart is our blueprint. Now, what you and I are is each of us have patterns each day. I guarantee you, I can't guarantee it, but most likely uh, your leg, when you put on a pair of pants, goes into a certain leg, right or left, each and every time you put on a pair of pants out there. You've got a pattern. You've got rituals. And guess what? The individuals who trade these markets, they too, it's nothing but human emotion. You and I, we have to be psychologists to try to understand what the traders, what the human emotion of the market is. And at this moment in time, and the reason that I got involved with technical analysis is because all the fundamental analysis never answered the question, when a stop is going to drop, where is it likely headed to? And back in those days, a good uh, 14 years ago, now you have to understand, fundamentally, I could dance around a balance sheet as good as anyone. And I could read any financial statement and let you know what's going on. I was educated in that area. But that 
alone does not tell you what buyers and sellers are going to do. And if the blank hits the fan, where is it going? And so that's what attracted me to TFNN. So you're here, in essence, perhaps for a similar type reason to understand where something is likely headed to. And when I began that process, it was based upon understanding volume. And I do like to use volume, but it is not the be-all to end-all out here. But if we were looking at this chart, this daily time frame chart, and trying to identify where was it that price was likely headed to, you and I would look at the high-volume bar. I would look at the high-volume bar where there was some wide price spread. In this case here, wide price spread-ish to the upside. That would have been the trading session of February 5th. Now, price may still get down to that level. 1146.85 is the top. 11.17 is the bottom. Now, Tom would teach you. Hey, Steve, he'd say, come on, Steve, I taught you better than that. Go all the way back to the lows of December 21st, because that's where price might head to. And that's in the 973 to 1024 level out there. And price may indeed pull back there. But over the years, I've added an assortment of tools that are dependable, that assist us in understanding where price might pull back to. That way you and I can be the psychologists with market, we can understand the human emotion that is going on behind the traders inside of Google. Now, the cool thing about this is as we go ahead and we turn off volume and we turn on these profiles out here, you're going to see both daily and weekly. Today, he's got a brand new daily. We're more interested in the weekly right now as price pulled right back to support. That's what happens when something, an individual equity, an ETF, uh, is pulling back, you want to understand where that support is. And in the case of Google, even with a $108 move, and even with large volume today, by large volume, 4.4 million shares so far, it's going to be largest volume day. Yes, it's volume off of the top. But until support is broken, there ain't nothing broken. I know that seems like kind of a weird sentence, but that's a fact, Jack. 1173.41 is the real key number for Google until it breaks below that, like things aren't hunky-dory, for those taking $108 loss. But if you were thinking of exiting the trade right now, don't do it. If you were thinking of jumping on the short side of the trade and you did so this morning, beware. Because all that price has done inside of Google is pull back to support. Understanding our P's and Q's, really understanding support and resistance, our SNRs, that would be like Steve Rhodes out there, understanding me, that is, it would be a trip. But understanding support and resistance is such a fundamental key. And it is these sets of tools, whether you want to use volume or you want to add to that, and use these TAS market profiles and other patterns that are out there. Well, you know, you decide what's going to work best for you. But this always answers the question for me. So now the next question is, well, what's the market doing? And where is support inside the market? And that's really the key out here. Because the change in trend isn't going to take place until you see the backs of the bulls broken. And the only way that happens is to see price close below support. When we come back from this breakout here, we'll take a look at the topping signals that are out there. But more importantly, we'll take a look at support. Of course, I want to hear from you, and we've got uh, call-ahead seating. So if uh, I do hear from you, well, we'll change up our scheme a bit, and we'll take your question first. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Dow's off 12. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
the TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We did get a uh, emailer, uh, so we're going to go to that call ahead seat. And the first question here, uh, and the only question at this date, so it's uh, not too late to get your uh, emails in. Uh, this one comes from Kay. Can you look at Microsoft? So that's what we've got up on the t screens right now. MSFT is a ticker symbol. And the question is, and Kay, maybe I don't completely understand this. I'll do my best. Where it needs to close, I'm assuming close today, to fill the gap. And so the gap that uh, Kay is referring to, if you look on the left-hand side of the screen, folks, you'll see that on the trading session of April 24th, that uh, what Microsoft did was trade up to a high of 125.85. The very next day is when it made its 52-week high, or maybe all-time high, uh, for that matter. Uh, and uh, there was a gap to the upside. And so the question I suppose remember gaps are our friends, but what Kay is saying is, hey, this might uh, pull it back into that gap. That would be your support level. And so I suppose the question is, where does price need to close below to suggest that uh, Microsoft might fill the gap? So the first thing I would look at, Kay, if that is your question, I would look at the low of April 25th. That's going to be a first level of support, potential support. That's at 128.83 out there. Now, look, do all gaps get filled? Go do the studies out there. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Not every single gap gets filled out there. Uh, there are some gaps that are inside the Dow that have never been filled, will never be filled. So don't give me that. Uh, but many times it do. What does that mean, gaps get filled? All it means is prices tend to pull back to a breakout area. That's all that would be going on. Just because you see a gap, don't start to get overly bearish on the stock. Instead, look for some patterns that are out here. Now, with regard to support, we talked about support during that first uh, breakout here. The support is way down lower. 120.43, that would be the top of the daily profile. 116.50 would really be the 
true support area. Well, I'll call it level three support, 116.50. The bottom of the box, the top of the weekly box, 111.47. The top of the monthly box, 104.54. This is mean and green to the upside. Are there any topping signals? Another good question. Uh, and if we take a look at it, the answer is no. I don't see a single topping signal. Remember, gaps are your friend. And in this case here, they're the bullish friend, that gap to the upside. Wide price spread, accelerated volume. They just You can see that, uh, you can see that uh, sentence in the art of time in the trade uh, time and time again. Now, if price were to pull back to... to to Stevie's green line K, that would be 127.91. I would say everything would be hunky-dory up to that level. If price closes below Stevie's green line, then maybe price is pulling back to the breakout area. So I'm going to go with the number of 127.91 as we speak today at 121 in the afternoon as the level where Microsoft would have to pull would have to close below in order to say that it's going to go ahead and pull back to its breakout level. So I hope that answers your question. Thanks so much for writing in. Uh, no other questions as we see right now. So let's go back to what we were originally going to do, if I can recall what that is. Oh, I know one of the things, just to get the slightly off track. You're talk so do you ever ask yourself the question, why did price stop where it did today? At least in some of the indices or really the equity futures markets, because, you know, you and I like to spend our time in the futures markets because we have more information. What you and I are looking at, we're looking at candlesticks, right? When we take a look at this, you can look at bars, you can look at candlesticks, but we're looking for information. The more information you and I have, the better off we can understand the patterns that are out there. So, for example, if you happen to be someone that trades the S&P 500 via the SPY or the SPXL or SPXS or SDS or SOS, I don't think it's SOS, but you know what I mean out there, um, and you're making your decisions off of volume at swing points, sound familiar? If you're making your decisions from um, other patterns that are out there. The question is, if you're really trading those things, why aren't you looking at the equity futures contract to really understand the patterns that are out there? In other words, you got 23 hours plus worth of information versus six and a half hours out there. You wouldn't do it because if you were doing that, you're trading with your hands tied behind your back. We don't want that to happen out here. Now, in the equity futures market out here, what's really interesting to me is apogee and perigee. And perigee, which is the uh, most recent lunar phase that came in uh, a week ago, I mean, I guess so we've got apogee should be coming in here pretty soon. I'll have to look that up. I hope it hasn't taken place already. I don't think that it has. But, but if we take a look at perigee, do you know what perigee is? Perigee is the point in time when the Earth is, oh, sorry, when the moon is closest to the Earth out there. And apogee is when the moon is furthest from Earth. You know the easy way that I remember that? You got A and P, apogee and perigee. And I know that uh, I'm dyslexic, so it just gets reversed. A becomes the furthest, P becomes the closest. It's just reversed out there. Now, the interesting thing about price today, if you look at the Dow and you look at the Russell 2000, arguably the two of the equity futures contracts that are what I'll call maybe the weakest, so to speak, hard to say that in this type of market, but take a look at how price pulled back to those levels and found a bottom. Now, what does that tell us? Look, that tells us that today the price point of 26,424 is really a key level. If you see price close below that, it could be curtains when it comes to down. Now, it could be because you and I will go take a look at another number out there. If you take a look at the Russell 2000, eh, you'd be watching that 1585.70 level that has held the support. If you're short, you're looking for price to close below that. But until that happens, be careful out there. Now, what also occurred on these are 30 minute time frame charts that you and I are looking at out here is on the ES Mini, when it pulled back, it did occur Sunday at 1 p.m. Thanks. I appreciate that, Z. I knew it was close uh, out there. And so I'll have to go take a look at uh, those. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, maybe eh, I don't think I'll be able to get it done during the break. But thank you for that. I knew it was, knew it was close. Either way, price still pulled back to that old perigee.
a lunar phase pivot point. Now, if we take a look at the ES Mini, here's what it did this morning, as was pulling back in that 29, 26-ish area. Uh, don't look at the price here being exact. Um, uh, but you've got a Gartley, HM Gartley buy pattern that formed this morning. Now, we know that it formed because, let me get my crosshair out here, because right here at 12 p.m., you had your bullish reversal signal. Remember, buyers and sellers show up. You and I are doing nothing more than reading the human emotion of the buyers and sellers of the ES Mini. In this case here, we're taking like a more shorter-term buyers and sellers to see what it is that they're signaling to you and I. You had nice A to B equals CD to the downside. We didn't know if that was the end of price until we could clearly see the bulls show up, which they did at 12 noon. If price can clear, you'll see a little blue dash line out here, that blue dash line from the trading session at 10 o'clock this morning, and it's the high of 29.4175 that is a key level. If price gets above that, it's going to continue moving higher to where you say, well, since that was a Gartley buy pattern, here's what you and I know. Every Gartley buy pattern has five potential outcomes. We're at outcome number two, the 0.618 retracement level, 29.42. Price decides to move above that, 29.46. And above that, back to that 100% move of a grooving move. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So let's uh, let's stay with the uh, 
the indices out here. I think we did this yesterday, but but, but maybe not. And and it, uh, it's going to be interesting because we're going to take a look at, again, each of the daily indices out here. And you're going to see uh, the plethora, plethora of topping signals out here. Now, here is the S&P uh, 500 out here. And we take a look at the S&P 500. You can see that yesterday looks like uh, that is wave number seven. That's letter number G. There's an A to B equals CD pattern. I don't have that drawn in here just yet. So that's a pattern that is out there. And a Rhodes Moment Indicator. It's hard to see it right now because there's a diamond in the rough, so to speak, and we haven't had much price movement. That's the indication. That's the first indication of a Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal. Now, we don't have a bearish reversal candle, at least not yet. This is a daily time frame chart, but uh, that is a uh, topping pattern that is present in the S&P 500. Now, in order for that topping pattern to confirm out here, remember the back of the bulls must be broken. That will not occur until price closes below at least 2894.53. 2885, perhaps even more likely, which is the top of the quarterly profile. We've got a we've got a monthly and a quarterly and the bottom of a daily all really lining up inside a small little area, um, which could or should be support. But you get below that, you close below that, and then clearly support will have been broken. That's for the S and P 500. If we take a look at the Dow, the Dow itself actually formed a. Rhodes Momentum Indicator Top. It did this on the trading session here. Kay was asking about gaps earlier. Well, here's a gap to the downside on April 25th. That confirmed the pattern. Uh, today, you've actually got a bearish reversal candle, but I don't know how the day is going to play out. But the Dow has given us a topping signal. But likewise with the Dow, the support level, that price must. Did I say must? I didn't mean mustard. I meant must close below is going to at least be the bottom of that daily profile. And that's 26.332. Well, the low today so far has been 26.398. Now, look, what we're not doing right now is trying to call the exact top tick. However, we have taken a look at a couple charts that say there's a top in place. If you're an aggressive trader, go for it. Make sure you have your stops in the appropriate place out there. If we take a look at the uh, the Russell 2000, here's the Russell 2000. What has it done? Well, yesterday, looks like it may have been wave number seven. The Russell has been in a consolidation pattern, although price is really trading right on Stevie's green line, slightly below it, but we're going to call it right on that line to the 1587-ish mark out here. So it's showing a sign of a top. However, in the case of the Russell 2000, well, for some reason, the profiles have gone away. You can see the consolidation in the equity futures contract between about 1500 and 1600, give or take out there. That's your 100 point consolidation. Inside the Russell 2000, just switch over to the June contract and, and be able to share with you that price must close below. Did I say must? Must! close below uh, 156090 in order for there to be a change in trend. Now let's not leave out the NQ out here. We'll pull over the NDX 100. Is there any kind of topping signal here that you see? And the answer is C. Yes. What was it? It was the old Tommy DeMarc set up nine count. Uh, the top in this case here, or potential top, came on the day following bar number nine. Bar number nine represented nine consecutive closes with a close above the bar four bars earlier. Eh, hey, look, I've got a workshop. If you'd like to learn the pattern, you should want to learn the pattern. It doesn't make any sense to not utilize these tools because they work. They at least make you aware of what's going on, multiple time frames. It's a beautiful thing. And then, of course, today, you now have a gap to the downside. Falling window is what it looks like on my screen out there. Forget about the fact that it's a doji candle. We're more interested in that K gap out there, like with regard to Microsoft. Only in this case here, this gap was to the downside. So inside the NDX 100, where does price need to close below in order to say there's a change in trend? And why are we focused on a change in trend? Because until the backs of the bulls are broken out here, the trend is your friend. And you don't know if a pullback is going to be anything more than just a retracement to test support. And in the case of the Dow equity futures contract, uh, I meant the NQ. We've already done the Dow. Hello, uh, that price level would be 76.2682. Now, the beauty of those profiles, especially the Dow and the NQ, is they're clearly bullish in structure, meaning that those levels should hold 76.26 and 26.332 respectively out there.
Those are the levels that must fail. And by fail, I mean a close below. Not the mere fact that it breaches below that, but an actual close below those levels. Now, let's not stop there. And I mentioned this during the uh, 1 p.m. update. The indice that does not have a topping signal is the New York Stock Exchange. And I know there's traders out there that uh, they will, when they see a divergence or some kind of pattern in New York Stock Exchange, they'll jump to the conclusion that all holy heck is going to break loose out here. Uh, well, if that's the case, there is no holy heck breaking loose inside the New York Stock Exchange. It does have problems. Those problems can be overcome with a uh, better net advancing issues uh, uh, situation, which it doesn't have just yet, but still no topping pattern inside the New York Stock Exchange, nor is there one for the Wilshire 5000. So now you've got two large, I mean giganto, even though there's not 5,000 issues inside the Wilshire 5,000 and the New York Stock Exchange, and somebody wants me to take a look at the 100 USA, which we can do that, part of the New York Stock Exchange, top 100 companies, U.S. companies, that is, inside the New York Stock Exchange. We can take a look at that, but here are no topping signal inside the Wilshire 5,000. So it's got to make me say, hmm, take a look at all the other Patterns that are out in play out here. Here's a NASDAQ composite. Does it have a topping pattern? It does. It's singing in the key of G. It made that yesterday. A gap to the downside suggests that we could be so, see lower prices coming at us. But why doesn't the Wilshire 5000 New York Stock Exchange? Now, I don't know the answer to that. But I've got to ask it. You've got to ask it. You don't have to ask it. You should ask it. If we take a look at the semis, they're trading slightly higher today, but they, too, form two topping signals out here. Wave number G, that's letter, or wave number seven, that's letter G on my screen, as well as that TD setup nine count. Everything is suggesting that what we really have going for the markets right now is some type of short-term top. Whether or not support is going to be broken, that I do not know. But we have a plethora of signals that some type of top is in place here when we take a look at the transports singing in the key of g as well as that td setup nine count pattern that's what has made the high thus far now let's go see if we can actually pull up the new york stock exchange so let me switch let me switch yeah, I should have had something else set up so I could have done it from right here. But well, you don't see what's on my other screens out here. Uh, so you don't really know what the heck I'm talking about. But let me try to find the New York Stock Exchange, USA 100. I know I've got it here. Just give me uno momento, por favor, while my system does its thing out here. So keep going. Come on. A little bit faster would be helpful. Not referring to you, referring to my system. Okay, we're getting into the ends. Here we go. So where's the NYSE? Oh, man, it should be all the way up at the top. What was I thinking? Well, clearly, you don't know this. Well, maybe you do know this. I, I, clearly, I was not thinking. So now I've got to go all the way back up to the top. We're going to a hard breakout here. Uh, and that's a shame. Not that we're going to go to a break. I can let the Larnix, the Larnix rest here. But popping up on my screen will be the daily, the weekly and the monthly NYSE. And here we're looking at it. No topping signal here either. Not a surprise. Look great. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So what the uh, question inside the Tiger's Den was, if we could take a look at the uh, New York Stock Exchange, the uh, top 100 U.S. holdings within it, and that's what this chart here represents. And the question was, can we identify any kind of uh, resistance out here? And uh, so on the daily time frame chart, one of the things that you and I would look for would be some bearish reversal candles out there. And yesterday was a shooting star, John. So I maybe overlooked this just a tad. Uh, that would be considered a resistance level, the high from yesterday, which was 10,749. But we're trading at 10,758 right now. So prices over that resistance level and prices over Stevie's green line at 10,720. So on the daily time frame chart, I don't see any resistance unless I try to pull it back further on the left but instead of doing that what you and i can do is go to the weekly time frame chart so as we do that the weekly time frame chart we can see that price is trading above resistance two weeks ago there was a bearish engulfing candle uh, price is trading over that high so in essence that sets up uh, saying well we don't see any resistance really here at this stage of the game weekly is bullish because it was above stevie's green line the oscillator and change line out there so now I just come to the monthly. And in the monthly, we can clearly see the bearish engulfing candle that takes us back into the time frame of um, October. It was October out here of last year, no surprise. And then we had a bearish sash candle in February of 2018. Now, in the case, both of these, the prior candle, the candle that it engulfed, or the candle that it sashed, yes, yeah, sashed, believe it or not, um, uh, main, 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 means uh, that the uh, high of the prior session, in this case here, uh, the highest high of either of these two sessions would be resistance. So that's the all-time high inside of the New York Stock Exchange. So between between the high of, uh, really would be the high of the month of September, that would be the 10,931 level. That would really be your next level of resistance out here inside the NYSE US uh, 100. So thanks for that question. Sorry that I botched it. Uh, going into the uh, break. Let me just check here. I got the Dow up uh, 15 points. No big surprise there. Um, and no other uh, questions that are in. So here's what we've established so far during today's show. Google has done what? Google's just simply pulled back to support. It's not broken. It is not broken yet. 1173.41 is the number. 
the majority of the cash indices, in essence, excluding the New York Stock Exchange and the Wilshire 5000, each have topping signals. But in this very strong market, and it's strong for many reasons. One of the biggest reasons is because if you're sitting across the globe, you're sitting in Europe, you're watching things kind of uh, explode, so to speak, like in Venezuela. Uh, if we take, of course, that's not Europe, but just kind of using the Venezuela as a, I don't know, as a sounding board, so to speak. What, what goes on here, understand, uh, picture yourself sitting over in a country like London, where you don't know what in the Sam heck those guys are going to do with regard to Brexit, because the politicians are not following what the people want. It's as if when we go to the polls and vote for something, if they don't get their way, whoever that other side is, it's it's like it's screaming memes. It, it's it's really it's insane. Well, when you get that type of stuff, you know what happens? Uncertainty. And it's the uncertainty about the country, and they say, I'd like to get my money. The big money says, I want to reduce my exposure, so where do I go? Do I go to China? Do I go to Japan? Where do I go? And all that money, not all, but most of that money is pouring into the U.S. of A. We see it time and time again. We see it because if you're going to get your money out, there's really three, well, there's, there's at least four things you could invest in by real estate. I think that's been going on in some markets across the uh, across the U.S. out there. Vancouver, well, Vancouver's not in the U.S., but see, in any event, the real estate's one. But we're not sitting here talking about real estate. So bonds is a great way to get your money into U.S. dollars. Yeah, you just invest in bonds. Uh, why do we think that bonds keep getting supported? It, it's easier than actually just uh, buying dollars out there. Uh, or the U.S. stock market is another great way, such as, as John of the Tigers Den asked, can we go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange top 100 country, uh, top 100 stocks that are out there, it, which has cleared all resistance levels. It just shows you the underlying strength, and that's really what's going on out there. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to see some type of top. We probably do see some type of top, and we probably see some type of scary scary push to the downside where everybody is going to think it's all over and people are going to start saying i ought to just simply go to cash and so forth and voila that's going to be the buying opportunity of a lifetime now, maybe not a lifetime but one heck of a buying opportunity but let's just see how things play out, and we'll just stay present right now. And uh, present means we'll just continue to look at those patterns, and we'll pay attention to levels of support because they are reliable for us. And when we see the back of the bulls broken, then we'll know it's turn. It's the turn of the other side to take the ball, but not until then. Okay, so what are we going to go take a look at now, Stevie? Um we should go take a look at, um, I don't know, what do you want to look at? Let's go look at gold. I think most folks want to take a look at gold. So what do we have going on in gold? Gold is perplexing. If we take a look at gold, let's start by looking at gold price in all the major currencies. U.S. dollars, that's on the left. Euros, that's uh, next to it, next door to it. Then you got yen, and then you've got uh, Great British Pounds out here. Now, today's trading, if you're wondering why gold's not going anywhere, well, if you're a gold trader in pounds, you're actually selling today. It's not at its, sessions low, at its session low, but it's pretty close. If you're trading in yen, you're really not there, right? Golden golden week going on there. So they're just kind of keeping things steady eddy out here. In the case of euros, it's flat. In the case of U.S. dollars, it's slightly up. In order for any instrument, it doesn't matter whether it's gold, whether it's light sweet crude, whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's the Dow, really whether it's the S&P, whether it is the NASDAQ, whether it is the Russell 2000, in order for anything to really get traction to the upside, it needs to be moving higher on all traders' desks out there. It does the instrument no good to move higher in dollars and then move lower in pounds. If you're asking yourself who's buying and who's selling, we get to look at the screen and we can see them right here. They're right in front of us. We just have to open our eyes to it. So what is gold doing? Well, right now, gold is trying to form a bottom. It's doing everything that it can to try to form a bottom. It just can't get a unanimous vote out here. 
Now, if we take a look at what gold is doing on a daily time frame out here, why may it be? Why may it be forming a bottom? Boy, that's just a beautiful uh, sentence structure out there. Well, it sort of has completed the A to B equals CD. I say sort of because not. Completely, 1261 would have been the number out here. But prices above Stevie's green uh, red line, green or red, and that's a 1281.20. And it's a signal that price is really trying to find a bottom. We can see we had a nice little bull sash out there. That was a few days ago. Uh, a little bearish reversal signal yesterday, but uh, that's kind of washing away. We'd really wash it away if there was a close above yesterday's high. So there's a signal that gold is trying to form a bottom out here, but has it? There's no way gold is going to form a bottom until traders in euros, traders in yen, traders in pounds, and traders in dollars all sing from the same hymnal. And they're not right now. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. It's not just about U.S. dollars, folks. Be right since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of tfnn.com don't let gold's next big run pass you by sign up today you know what's cool taking something that's good for you something specifically formulated to help with weight loss better sleep stress reduction and the need to detox nico our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment but today our food sources no longer contain the vitamins minerals and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong that's why we need primal edge daily nutrition it includes a special blend of ionic soil-based vitamins minerals fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form primal edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So I've been told that I confused folks out there. So let me wrap up the confusion. And it was uh, from the uh, Tiger's Den and just said, hey, gold in all of these uh, four currencies out here showed a bottom last week. And uh, and all we've seen is really a retracement of that bottom. And that is absolutely correct. I believe when I put this gold chart up here, the daily gold chart, I think that I said that it looks like gold has formed a bottom out here. So the real point that I was making with regard to the currencies is that there's no way gold is going to get any upside traction until it is moving higher in all major currencies. And what I was referring to there was today. 
I was speaking specifically about today when I made that uh, when I made that uh, statement out here. Again, we have in essence pullbacks or sellers at this stage for gold that is trading in pounds. That's moving lower today, where gold is moving slightly higher in terms of dollars. Now, with regard to that as being a potential bottom, we took a look at the daily time frame chart out there. Um, there's other factors we need to take into consideration. And right now, and John, this was uh, something that one of our guys in the den uh, threw up here, which was the hourly time frame chart for gold, which, by the way, has been making just simply beautiful, gorgeous patterns out there. Uh, John, I think I saw something where you went ahead and closed out a gold trade earlier. I believe it might have been because of gold and apogee. If you had been looking at the hourly time frame charts, newsletter subscribers, for example, this morning knew at 8 o'clock that we were anticipating that gold was going to pull back. And the reason was on the hourly chart, price was getting up to this little resistance line, this little green lash, dash line established by the TD setup nine count. And it was also forming a TD setup nine count and then swoosh to the downside. So the hourly chart is forming great patterns. What I am uncertain of right now is whether or not uh, gold is going to be able to take out that high. By the way, that high now would need to be, there would be good upside action if gold can close above 1288.20. 1288.20, that's the next resistance. Otherwise, right now, we're just kind of consolidating sideways. So, folks, if you're a trader of gold, I'd say put up that one-hour time frame chart and watch the patterns appear there. In any event, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, my favorite polar bear, he's voted the number one polar bear in Antarctica and at TFNN. That's David White. He's up next. I'll see you on Wonderful Wednesday, folks.